Hi everyone, Mark here. This video is all about Vader use cases and it's more specifically those use cases that are live and pending to go live in the Vader. So before we get started, let's cover a couple definitions. A use case, one of the formal definitions, there are more than one, but uh, this one says it's a list of actions or events or event steps defining the interactions between a role and a system to achieve a goal. And my definition of live in this case is the use case is live in the Vader, meaning it's been developed and tested uh, and cleared any regulatory hurdles, uh, cleared all, all hurdles, uh, and is live and being used right now. Uh, pending means the same thing except it has not cleared all the regulatory or government approvals. It's ready to go live, it's been built, it's been tested, uh, it's just not able to go live for reasons out of Veritasium's control. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at these use cases. And there's nothing magical about these, it's just a list that I came up with. Uh, typically when you would build a, a software platform as this, you would define a, a large number of use cases and then prioritize them and, and slot them into these various releases that the development team puts out. It's a lot more involved and complicated than this. This is simplified greatly, but case that is something that could be of benefit to somebody using it. If we go back and review again, um, event steps defining the interactions between a role and a system to achieve a goal. So in this case, the, the role is me as the user. And in a couple specific examples, I have to define that a little bit further because there will be a couple types of users. Uh, but for the most part, one role that I'm talking about, and that's uh, the role of user uh, to achieve a goal. And the goal in this case is to put your money to work on the platform and get a return. What I've done is I've organized these by what I'm calling the product or the, the piece of the platform itself. And you'll see more in a minute what I mean about that. Uh, so we've got the Vader, the wallet, uh, VE assets, VE research, etc. Then the status on all of these upper ones is live, as I just talked about. The status of that means people are using them. And the bottom ones uh, are live in the sense that they're in the platform and available. Uh, they just can't be utilized by customers yet. Okay. Uh, v VE asset actions. You can buy, redeem, and sell any of these tokens below it. Gold one ounce, one gram, silver one kilo, one ounce, palladium one ounce. You can also receive, send, and store all of those tokens and Ethereum, Veritasium, and the dollar, and soon many more fiat representatives. And so we'll run through these in just a minute. Um, actually, what we'll do now, I'll just go through these one at a time and show people. This is sort of a FUD busting video. Okay. Um, first one, view, view your global or view the global digital asset exposure portfolio and performance. Across the top we've got performance. Um, if this is bigger here, let me, I wonder if I can get enough. There we go. Uh, hopefully that's still visible on the screen, but you'll see now, now it popped up three columns here. So this is our performance last 30 days. We've got all these other performance parameters here. I'm not going to go through those. We've gone through all those, those functionality and other videos. I'm just going to kind of show uh, each of these use cases do actually exist out in the platform and are available today right now. So there's our performance section. Um, 
Next one up, receive, send, store, an asset. And so here we have, as you see up in the corner, my wallet. The tokens have been enabled, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, but once again, if we review the use case, receive, send, store an asset, and also view. Uh, so let's just pick one here, an asset. Uh, let's say Veritasium. And the, the Vader's wallet, I click Veritasium and I click receive. And it says receive very directly into your wallet. Okay, over here on sending, I can scan on my pillar wallet. Boom, okay. Now pop that up. Now, all I have to figure out is, next step is, well, how much do I want to send? So, let's send five of them over. And I'd like to speed this up for the purposes of the video. And we'll say next. And that's coming over to CBB3. I know that's me. So I can confirm. Magic. Okay. So it's that's, 10 o'clock. Thank you. That's on its way. Now, whoops, uh, now, uh, let's look at, at send, but let's look at send from a different perspective. Let me close this calendar. I accidentally open. Okay, what do I want to send? Uh, you know, we could send any of these assets, but just for the purposes of the demo, let's send out some Ethereum. This time we're just going to do the opposite of what we did. I'm going to want to show the Ethereum address and uh, just normally what I would do is do this and then on here you can press this and hold your phone up to the camera and it'll grab that QR code. But because of the recording software I'm using, I'm not able to do that. So here's the alternative way, the old fashioned way, so to speak. You can just go grab it from an email or somewhere else, copy it, and we see the, the varies arrived. So we will take a look at that in one second. So we want to paste into the recipient there. And we see over here on the address, 94CF, that's the Ethereum wallet address here with 3.9998 in it. And uh, let's just send a quarter of one over for the demo. Put in 0.25, that equates to $35 approximately USD. There's the recipient I've pasted in. I hit send. Now over here, I can normally, I would just accept the gas as specified by the Vader, but for the purposes of the video, I would like to speed it up to fast. And then hit confirm. We see transaction created. And then over here on the pillar wallet, we already see the transaction now is coming in and pending. And so that was quick. Let's close back here. Let me we see the balance has deducted out of the Ethereum. And we see on the pillar wallet on my phone now the Ethereum has indeed arrived. So now we have proven to ourselves we can send 
we can receive, um, we can view, and we can store. All right, let's take a peek at the next use case here. Buy an, a an asset with Ethereum or US dollars. Okay, so for that, let's go over to the assets. And I don't know, what do we want to buy today? Let's buy some gold. Let's buy some couple grams. Let's see. Let's see. Buy. How do I want to pay? Well, we could pay with a bank account. Um, in this case, I've got Ethereum right sitting here in my Vader wallet. Let's pay with Ethereum. You get the warning. And what's one of them going to cost? How much Ethereum? Third of an Ethereum. So if we put in three, that's roughly one eth worth of, that's three grams of gold. Yes, I definitely want the discount. And I have seen the terms of use already. I've read that. I'm going to click to that. Hit continue. Order's ready to go. Let's submit that. And come out. Kick that one up a little fast too. Confirm that guy. Transactions created and off it's running. We see the purchase order's been created now and the three grams of gold on are being processed all right so we'll check back with that in just a minute uh, how about redeeming an asset or taking delivery so uh, let me close this screen let's look at our wallet here and we can see that what's an asset I could redeem? Redeem means to take delivery, physical delivery of the underlying asset backing the token. So in this case, I've got some VE gold there. I know we just bought some more. That one's not cleared yet, but I already had five. So let's use that. And to, to get to that function, we, we come back over to assets out of the wallet and we've got redemptions here uh, we've got nothing in there though for this transaction we've got to do something first so it's going on here i'm sure it'll be okay but okay there we go okay that one's pending now i can come back let's take a quick peek at that we see that has now changed to pending um, does have the discount on there etc so we'll keep our eye on that one let's go back to the other task at hand we see the buy buttons come back now uh, but this time we're interested in redeeming so redeem means we want to take delivery and we're going to ex in, in essence exchange the token and then uh, take delivery back uh, of the underlying metal so if we were to say we wanted to take delivery of five and then I would put in my shipping information. Okay, we filled out our fill shipping information. We click next. And how would we like to pay for the redemption fees? Gives us plenty of options here. In this case, um, I'm redeeming the v the gold one grams. Uh, I wouldn't have. I don't have any ba enough balances in any of these others. I would need to pick US dollars fee for the delivery, including the shipping fee handling and insurance for this case for that address that I entered. $94.98 USD. You would agree to the terms of use. Confirm and then move on. That we've gone through that. What's next? View de 
asset detailed information. Now this is an easy one. Let's look at one ounce gold. We can see token information on here. We can go out to etherscan.io on the pop out here, go out directly on the blockchain, look at more information. We can see the performance history of the underlying asset. And we can see the entire token minting history, including the initial token and any additions and subtractions along the way. How about the asset purchase, redemption, and sale history? Can we look at that? I think we can. Look at here, purchases. Here's all my purchases, including the new one I just submitted. Oh, and look at there, perfect timing. It was just fulfilled. So if I click that order, we can see pretty fast, pretty fast purchase time. If you ask me, I just purchased those three grams of gold in four minutes on the blockchain. Let's see what's next. All right, we just viewed the purchase, redemption, and sale history. Now we need to sell an asset for ETH or US dollars. So we're in my wallet. We've got some VE gold here. Let's go over to assets and VE gold G1. Let's sell. We see we can sell for USD or Ethereum. Okay. So if I select USD, you'll want to click Terms of Use, read that, and then agree to it. And I need to fill in the amount of how much I want to sell. So then I want to create an offer and read through that, understand that, and confirm. And click Continue. Now it's giving me an offer to sell those five gram tokens, five one gram tokens back to Veritasium for $193.152. If I say sell those guys, I'm going to get a pop up to my MetaMask. Grab that. Then you're going to want to confirm that the gold will be sold and the US dollars placed back into my account. And they would go right into the wallet into this US dollar bucket. Okay. So now we've sold an asset for Ethereum or US dollars. VE research. We can first obtain free research. Everyone likes free. Let's go look at that. Go to VE research. And lo and behold, lots and lots and lots of research out here, including things like the auto report for Veritasium, asset tokens, asset back tokens. VE Lend, we've got crypto reviews. Uh, if you're looking for something in particular, you can say, well, how about that populist review? Hmm. No. Oh, that's right. That's the one I already got. Let me, I'm going to look at the PayPi one. Oh, there's PayPi. Oh, we see two here. Open to get the free one redacted or click buy and it'll lead you through the, the process to purchase the, the paid research for Veritasium tokens. Okay, we just knocked off two there, free research and buy paid research. How about getting help, tutorial, feedback and support? Okay, well, Tutorial link is here. That, I don't want to follow that though. 
that's off the Veritasium homepage. So we can go to go to the home page. And then we would simply click the Access Vader tutorial here. And that will open up for us the, the Vader tutorial. Tutorial are lots of how-to videos as well as detailed instructions to go through every function on the, the Vader itself. All right, we're good there. We have looked at the tutorial. How about feedback or support? Well, let's see. I see a send feedback here. Send feedback pops up to send feedback window where you can enter your email, the subject, put in any textual information about your feedback that you'd like to send or your issue or whatever you have. You can click to make attachments. Your Ethereum address will be pre populated for you. So that definitely is there. And I happen to know the help is the same functionality. Uh, they may be, may be in the process of splitting these apart, but you can contact support here and it gives you that same pop-up. All right. Okay, so we're in VE exposure now. And I don't have any exposures. Let me show you real quick on this particular account but where I do have them is on a different account and so we will go there and now we immediately see some data populate so let's look at this open a dis digital asset exposure with F oh those are easy that's the easy button 0.039 thank you for the minimum and it's telling me insufficient balance for ah because this accounts uh, I'm I'm fully invested here so uh, I can't fully go through that process but you would hit submit and lo and behold then it would open an exposure here which I believe will be the next thing here view exposure history of open and closed as well as the companion view exposure detailed information so we can see our history here open closed we can click on one and get detailed information about it on performance on the contents of the bucket that it bought in the exposure the timeline uh, the, the performance to date etc okay uh, next up would be close and exposure to take delivery. We can do that by you simply say close the exposure and you would click the assets delivery button. This is going to tell you exactly what will be delivered. It will be delivered to the MetaMask account associated with this, your wallet address here. So the Ethereum would actually go into this bucket and the Veritasium into this bucket and the PayPi out into the, the MetaMask. And you would want to agree and then and then continue. And that's closing exposure to take delivery. Next up would be closing and exposure directly for F and that'd be the opposite side of that. That's just waiting for the Ethereum. In this case, if we go through that, the Vader will go through a process to sell those tokens instead of delivering them to you. So this one's easier, but it takes longer. The other one, you have to know a little bit more, but it's faster. Okay. And that's it for VE exposure. Rent. Open an exposure with ETH. Now here's one case where VE rent has two roles in it. All of the other functions we've looked at thus far has one role, just user. That's me so far. 
rent has two roles uh, because you need a renter and a rentee. You need both sides of the equation. And so we come in, we go to VE rent, and we can offer our vary. So we can essentially put an offer out there for for uh, to economically rent your very out to an Ethereum holder who wants to open a, an exposure using his or her Ethereum. And so the person with the very, the rentee, will partner with the renter, the person with the, the Ethereum, and both halves will come together and they will open the exposure. The exposures are basically the exact same thing as opening one directly, except the rental platform brings two different parties together to enable both halves of that transaction. And so, um, likewise, if you're the, the renter and you need to get very tokens to open your exposure, you'd go to this tab, you could put in an offer and do the exact same thing. You could get very instead of offering very. And then finally the other way you can do it is just accept one of these existing offers that are out there. And so with that we see we can open an exposure we can uh, with either Ethereum or with very either half right as the renter or the rentee. Uh, final thing here would be to close the exposure. Now you must be the renter to close the exposure. You cannot, you cannot close the exposure as the, as the rentee. You must be the renter, the person funding, the person funding the exposure. And so to do that, you would simply click close exposure, go through that same process. It's again, the same, same functionality, uh, except only the renter can do it in the, the rental situation, not the rentee. Okay, there we have it. We have gone through all of our 18 use cases, and we've proven to the naysayers in just a slightly over a half hour that the Vader does indeed have live use cases and is a functioning entity. Thanks much, everyone. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.